reason I call it a toolkit is because um, I had to come up with a, a way to take care of this condition. And even though I was an ER nurse and an ICU nurse and a trauma nurse, I had no idea what this condition was. It wasn't until I was diagnosed that I, I found out about it and started my own journey. So this is going to be the light and airy part. Okay, I just want to say that um, I am a volunteer of RSDSA. I am not um, getting paid for this. And I come from a different perspective because I'm also a nurse, so I look at things in a different way. And I know how the medical community is looking at patients. So if there's some things that I have done that might be helpful for you, that's my goal for you. But it's really just educational. And what works for me might not work for you, but it might. Okay, about Nurse Beth, the, pa the person. I've been married for a very long time, and if it wasn't for my partner, Glenn, down there, I wouldn't even be here, because driving I can do locally, but I don't really do long-term driving. So he's a wonderful person. I have two wonderful children, um, but I do have unique perspectives, and I think when you're living with anything that's chronic, such as CRPS, you need to develop a really good sense of humor. I already had a good sense of humor, because I'm a nurse, and boy, could I say a lot of funny things about that? But um, now I'm the funny one. Nurse Beth, the patient. Well, I will say, and for the medical professionals here, we don't like to be patients. If you think you don't like to be patients, well, we really don't like to be patients. We like to have that sense of control. To be the one that now needs the support is a little difficult to do. But I uh, was working, and I fell on a wet floor. I tore my ACL in my left leg, and I thought, okay, no big deal. It's a little inconvenient. Have a little surgery, a little PT, and then, you know, go on your little way. But in the recovery room, I knew something was not right. Uh, I had so much relentless, persistent, non-explainable pain that all I could do was scream. And I went from a little ambulatory procedure to now I had to stay in the hospital for five days on a pain pump. And I can tell you that nobody understood what was really happening, but I knew something was wrong. It still took me, even though I can articulate and say to physicians and practitioners, I'm feeling very like neuropathic. I can feel these electrical sensations in my leg. I know that's not post-op. It's feeling like there's things crawling up and down my leg. I know that's not post-op. And it still took me six months to get diagnosed. But I do feel lucky because for a lot of people it takes almost years to get diagnosed. So six months wasn't so bad. I did develop type 2, which just means that I had a documented nerve injury. I did go through that lovely EMG study. So if you've ever had that, that wasn't pleasant. It was really painful on my unaffected leg, but when they did it on my regular leg, I said, so uh, when are we going to start? And he said, Beth, we're done. So I knew I had a nerve injury. Um, and over time, I thought, now that I have a diagnosis, now I have a plan. But that's when I had to start educating myself. That's when I reached out to actually Jim many years ago. And here I am, a critical care trauma nurse. I know about trauma. I cried to him for about 40 minutes. And that started my journey with learning. I realized that I had to become the CEO of my own health. And I had to educate myself so I could then educate um, people in my team. So I just want, for those who do not have it, to imagine this. Imagine that your skin is so sensitive that a hug is painful, that putting bed sheets on is painful, wearing shoes, which is why I'm usually barefoot and in flip-flops in the middle of the winter, is painful, that you can actually have pain from sitting in a car from vibrations, which I will say is not as bad as it used to be, but that's just not normal. My son is a musician, and I'd go to his concerts, and I'd smile like, this is wonderful. But it was so painful when that bass drum started hitting around. I was just like, oh, how could that be painful? Um, and feeling like your skin is ice and fire. Logically, does that even make any sense? How could your skin feel hot and cold at the same time? So here's where my comic relief comes in. I saw this, um, which will be relatable to a lot of people. You start really good, and you feel like, you know, okay. And all of a sudden you go, I'm going, 
I'm going? Okay. I'm done. I have to end this activity. I can't do it anymore. Uh, this was funny because when I've gone to the emergency room, as I've talked to many of you, and I have a list of all the things I'm on, I keep thinking to myself, if I could just put it all in one pill and be done for the day, that would really be good. Um, and this one was good. I've actually had people say to me, so why are you so tired? And I said, well, you know, I'm having a hard time sleeping. And they said, well, just go to sleep. And I thought, oh, why at night did they get that one? So when all these odd things happen, and I'm going to show you because Nurse Bet's very visual. I like you to see things because you can't always believe it. I feel like I'm in a Seinfeld episode. So I speak in the third person. This is what Nurse Bet's going to look like because I still almost can't believe it. But I've developed skills. And you think, what kind of skills? Well, I can now turn blue. And it's not like I'm thinking it, it just automatically happens. I turn blue. It almost feels like my feet, because I have it mainly in my left leg, is in the Arctic Ocean and I've turned into this glacier. I can turn red and I can exactly remember the date I turned red. I was actually in the hospital and I went from that blue kind of cyanotic dead foot look to this bright red and I thought, what the heck is that? Um, but it feels like molten lava. It almost feels like I have like, these skills that I could like light a campfire. The best is I can turn red and blue at the same time. And every time it happens, and my husband will, will attest to this, I'll say, can you believe it? Just look at this. How is this even possible that you could be burning hot here and freezing cold like a dead foot? I still think that's the most amazing thing ever. Um, the best is the brain fog. I almost feel sometimes when it happens like I'm a, a vending machine and I put the money in and nothing came out. So if you have this condition and it happens, that's okay. I lose my trend of thought all the time. I actually can turn shiny. It doesn't happen all the time. Um, and I remember the first time it happened. It almost looked like when I, did I come out of the shower and not dry my arm? Like, how could I possibly be shiny, like a wax floor? And when we did the walk in Long Island um, the first year, I have made a lot of educational boards that you'll actually see outside. And this mother was looking at this picture, and she started to cry. And I said, you know, what's the matter? She goes, my son, sometimes his skin gets like that. And I thought he was just being an obnoxious teenager, you know, flinging water on himself. I said, it is an amazing thing that that can happen. Um, I also developed these geometrical looking things. I almost look like a trellis. It doesn't happen all the time, but it's a skill. Okay, the best is, and you're gonna see it because now the lights are gonna make me red, my nose gets very inflamed. I could light the way, <laughs> like Christmas. And I do get sometimes unusual swelling, almost like the hump of a camel. That's supposed to be funny. So if I had a magic wand, I would definitely share it with all of you after I use it first. But until I can find that magic wand, what do I do? I decided that I had to find a way so that I could get out of the house. So you should really be proud of yourself if you're here. It took me eight years to get to an RSDSA conference. So you should really applaud yourself for just getting here. I had to decide, if I'm having issues at home, how am I going to manage this on the outside? And I know many of us have talked about that. How am I going to get out of the house? So I developed all these different toolkits for different things. And believe me, at the beginning, I never thought I could travel, and now I can travel. But I've done all these things in conjunction with a good team. And it does take a long time sometimes to find a good team but always expect the unexpected and plan ahead. Okay, now this is what goes on in my mind, so you can have empathy for my husband. But I'm always thinking, what am I going to need to get from point A to point B? So I have to think about the weather, and I think many of you would agree, I shouldn't have been a nurse, I should have been a meteorologist, because I do feel snow coming. Can't explain it. it, could be a beautiful sunny day, but I can definitely feel it. But you have to think about what your tolerance level is, where you're going to go, what's the comfort level, what's the temperature. Um, but have faith that you can do it with a lot of planning. 
So why do I have this toolkit? Well, because Nurse Beth needed to find a way to have some control over her life. And quite honestly, um, learning to let go of the fear of the unknown. I can't control everything, but I can control my own destiny. And by putting together some of these toolkits, which I'll show you, has helped me in many ways. For example, when my husband's been in the emergency room a couple of times, well, that wasn't part of my day. But if I didn't have everything that I needed, I wouldn't have been able to help him. But it has really improved the quality of my life. So who needs a toolkit? Quite honestly, anyone with a persistent chronic condition, such as I have asthma, so I'm always prepared with that, you should always have what you need. Why worry about it and not have it with you? Um, this is key because a lot of times people will say it's not a real medical condition. It is a real medical condition. Okay, so what is a toolkit? They're just practical tools. Some of the things I'm going to show you, you might not need, but you might have things that I don't need. But it's honestly helped with the safety and my compliance of my plan. It does organize and it makes everything accessible. The worst thing to do is to be in that level of acuity, and you know what I'm saying, right there, and you can't find what you need. That only compounds the whole, the whole stress in your body. It gives you confidence that you can get from point A to point B. And it honestly can build the communication with your doctor. Because if you have what you need, it helps expedite the conversation. So for example, you go to the doctor, and even Nurse Beth writes her list of questions because I don't want to forget. But I can bring out the medication bottle and say, listen, could you just explain this again? I'm really not quite sure when I should take that. Or I'm having trouble with this dose. Is there something else that we could do? Or maybe you can't take the pill form. Can we discuss, does it come in a liquid? Does it come in a cream? Can I do something else with it? It does help with the communication. But for me, it's like an umbrella. If I bring all the stuff, then I won't need it. But you know that one day you don't bring it, you're going to need it. So this is in my everyday toolkit, which I carry with me at all times. And yes, for men, and you don't know what it is, it's a makeup case, OK? There is no makeup in it. But it has things that I need every day. I might not need them every day, but I have them every day. The one thing I will say to you that's very important, especially for going into the emergency room, Many times when you go to the emergency room, it's not because you're, you're feeling good and you want a little massage. You can't talk because you're in a lot of pain. And so how do then you articulate to people, excuse me, I have this weird condition. You can't really talk. So what I've done is I've actually brought things with me. So for example, this might look like a lot, but that's my medication list. And the first time I did it, I didn't separate them into categories. I kind of just wrote them all together. And I remember a practitioner, and we'll just leave it at that, who picked it up and said, you're on way too many meds, and gave it back to me. And I'm thinking, oh my god, I'm just here for some relief. What, what do you have to antagonize me for? But then I thought, you know what? I'm going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to write all the meds that I take every day, all the time, including my asthma meds. I'm going to write here meds that I take PRN, meaning, you know, as I need it. Might not need it every day, but I'll put it there. And these are my nutritional supplements. Why? Because if your nervous and immune system is hyper-functioning and it's working too hard, not because we're telling it so, it's just what's happening, then I need more than a multivitamin. I need something that's going to be more um, nutritionally healative to me, not curative but healative. I bring that in. I also put up here the different uh, diagnoses that I have and all my doctors, because that brain fog sometimes hit and I, I can't remember the numbers. Um, I also bring in the hospital guideline. What I have started to do, because I was recently in the hospital again, is I actually do it in orange. Why? So when it goes into the chart, it doesn't get lost with all the other white papers. If you put it with orange, it does draw a little bit of attention to that. I also carry, which is here, and I know it's in your little bag that you got today. Um, T 
tips for managing complex regional pain syndrome. Now, I just want you to know, the goal for me doing this is not so every practitioner knows every little detail, but I find it validating to bring in things that are from RSDSA. I also carry that little card that says I have CRPS. It's very validating. It really provides, in a very short period, a little education about, it, about what it is. I've appreciated that when I was in the ER and patients came in with conditions, I had no idea what they were. And they brought in a little information. I'm like, oh, thank God, at least I can get a little, a little information from that. I also, in my list here of meds, having my daily meds, but I also have meds that are from specialty compounded pharmacies. For example, the low-dose naltrexone and my ketamine. They don't come from regular pharmacies. They're compounded special pharmacies. Okay, so to be funny, because I have to be funny a little bit, you could walk around with a big tool belt on you and put all your meds in there, but honestly, it's not comfortable and it doesn't go with anything you wear. So I decided to do my toolkit. However, for the men in the room who don't walk around with the handbag, um, you could always use the fanny packs. Uh, this is me at the walk at Long Island uh, this past September, and someone should have said I look like the Great Pumpkin. They should have said something, but. For me, I knew that I had certain emergency meds and my EpiPens, so no matter where I was at the walk or who I was talking to, I had control. And there are packs that I have um, that you can get that also have um, like the cool packs in it. So for example, uh, my low-dose naltrexone, I use it as a liquid because I could not tolerate the pills and that needs to be refrigerated. And my ketamine trochies, which I'll show you if you'd like to see them, um, when it's very warm, they need to be refrigerated. So that's why I use that. So. Some other things I do every day. Now, I say every day, it doesn't mean that I physically can do it every day. But I have found that I don't have arthritis, but I found some of the suggestions that they had from uh, the Arthritis Foundation on modified yoga. Now, I know what you're thinking. You can't even stand sometimes. You can't even sit sometimes. What is Nurse Beth talking about doing yoga? Sometimes it's something I just did sitting in a chair and it might have been just my arms moving. Maybe it was just a little meditation time. It's okay. Sometimes, just like what Jim said, before you have to move, and Dr. Data, you have to move. Even if it's just your head and your arms, give yourself credit for doing that. So that's been very helpful. Uh, Flip-flops. I would love to wear my high heels and my closed shoes, but it is not possible. So I, I get a lot of looks when I go out, and I have my sleeveless you know, uh, outfits on in my flip-flops. Um, I do have a wheelchair and a cane. Doesn't mean I'm in that wheelchair all the time. Um, I think the puppy's been very cathartic because on days that I've been really bad, she does get me out of that bed. Um, this I want to point out. A lot of people have said to me, and it does make sense, if your skin is burning and it feels burning, it's similar to being at the beach. Now, I'm very fair, so I burn really quickly. What happens after you have a burn? Your skin gets itchy. So many of us who have the allodynia, the burning, have very itchy skin. So besides antihistamines, I found a cream that has been very helpful t to me, which if you want to see it, I'll, I'll tell you off camera. But it's been very helpful because your skin's very dry and it can be very itchy. And I also always wear some kind of band. These are from the organization. Um, but you can get a Mediband similar to um, if you have like a seizure disorder or diabetes. And I used to look at those when you came into the emergency room. Because if you couldn't talk and you came in or you were unconscious and I had nobody with you and I didn't know what your history was, that was very helpful for me. Okay, one of the things that I do do, remember I said that a multivitamin for me is not going to help. Why? because my nervous and immune system is working doubly hard. So there was a great study that was done on vitamin C, and half the population didn't get it, and the other half with the wrist fractures did. And surprisingly enough, the ones that did receive the vitamin C 
did not develop CRPS. So for me, that was a win. I said, well, I can do that. And as long as your doctor says, listen, it's fine for you to take vitamin C, why wouldn't you take vitamin C? Um, and I also, this is the vitamin C. I'm not advocating any one thing. I'm just showing you this is what I use. This is from a company, Melaleuca, and the reason I like it is because it's in powdered form and because sometimes the CRPS does affect my GI system. I need something that I don't have to work very hard to break down, so I use powder. I also take calcium and D3 to keep those bones, even though I tell my kids I'm only 32, but you know, I need my calcium and my D3. But this is the powder blend. Some of you have been talking to me and asking me what I, what I take. This is a prescription. I did not put the doses down that I have because everybody might be different, but I think this is something that would be powerful to talk to your doctor about. Simply saying, because most doctors don't know about this, simply saying if my nervous and immune system is working really hard, then a multivitamin is just not enough. How do I nourish that nervous system and immune system that's working so hard? Um, this has given me energy. And you know, as Nurse Bet's a little doubting, I I'm, I'm still have that scientific mind. How could this really help? So I stopped using it for a couple of days. And I was so weak. And I just felt, you almost, I almost felt like I had mono. I didn't have mono. But you feel like you have mono, that weakness. And then I took the mixture, sorry, that's not a good picture, <laughs> and I mixed it with a lot of water, that vitamin C packet, and my whole powder blend. And I have to tell you, after time, I felt totally different. Do I still have the CRPS? Of course. But I feel helative. That mixed with the low-dose naltrexone in liquid for me, because I can't take the pills, has really changed my life. I would never, when I sat there like you are years ago, I thought I would never be able to ever share what I've learned. This has made a huge difference for me. Um, I also did, and I'm not advocating any one thing, but I also put in a reverse osmosis in my home because I've noticed that I'm a little more sensitive, not here, physically I'm a little more sensitive to things in my environment. So if I can protect myself a little bit, I thought, what the heck, I'm gonna do that. Okay. You didn't realize Nurse Beth's slides were gonna be full of pictures. Um, what do I carry every day? An umbrella, why? Because sometimes, and think about it, if you had a sunburn, would you wanna go back to the beach and sit in front of the sun? No, but that's how we feel. We feel like we're being burnt. I have to protect myself. So that is me, I'm sorry. Um, my husband's actually building for, for us to go to the beach because I haven't made it to the water yet because the sand's a little noxious. But they do have these blue, you might have seen it, I'm from, I'm from Long Island if you haven't noticed. Um, they have those, path, those blue pads that you'll see kids and it's like a big PVC wheelchair so my husband's making me but he made it so large that three people could sit in it so we need to just downsize it a little bit. Um, but you can also go, uh, this was us, my kids and I, at um, a play in Manhattan, and I thought, I can walk, but walking can be an issue, and if you have it lower limb, you know what I'm saying, so I do go in the wheelchair. Why? Because the more I stand on my feet, which you'll see, I molt and change colors, and then the flare gets worse, so why would I do that? I'm going to sit. They actually gave us um, a discount on the tickets because there is a... Uh, accessible area, so just something to put in mind. And as you know, I had uh, my TENS machine on for other issues, um, and I carry my heating pad for those dystonic, you know, muscle cramps, which they are like giant trolley horses that just don't end. So I find sometimes if I put it on that, it will help calm it down. And if you're wondering what this is, I was gonna wear red today, because I do turn red a lot, it actually is distracting to other people because then they don't realize that you're turning red. But I do have a raincoat that I found that has no sleeves. I do get a lot of looks, but it's, it fits for me. Um, other things that I've done is a neck pillow because sometimes I just can't sleep on a regular pillow. And I have, I am not gluten sensitive. I do not have an allergy. But I do notice that when I'm really flaring, if I lower my gluten, it does help. 
Um, for those who have never tried it, I did bring a bag of those um, gluten-free pretzels, and we'll open it up. Uh, Tammy has them. We'll open them up and put them in the back if you want to try. If you have a soy allergy, though, don't eat them because they, they are soy-based. Um, and be surprising or not, I have switched out pasta for my family and, t of course, told them, oh, definitely, it's regular pasta. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It was quinoa pasta or rice pasta. And when you put sauce on it and a whole lot of other stuff, as a mother, you smile and go, of course, it's regular pasta. How's your dinner? They don't know. They don't know. But that has helped. And I always bring my own towel. Why? Because when you go to a hotel, I don't know about you, but my skin's a little sensitive. I'm not using detergent, a towel with detergent that they use. Um, and I always bring this soft blanket that I have. <clears throat> Why? Because I can't always lay on other people's sheets. Because I use scent-free detergents. So this is how I've learned to accommodate. OK, other things. We've talked about the flip-flops. And someone should really come up with really fancy flip-flops. I'd, I'd love to buy some. I go into adaptive clothing. Why is that? I wear lots of baggy things that are comfortable for me. You have to find what's comfortable for you. Um, I can't really wear long sleeve shirts anymore because it becomes a little noxious. So I wear a lot of um, sleeveless things. Uh, there's those medications that I mentioned to you before, the low dose naltrexone. And I just want to say that's it in liquid. I did try the low dose naltrexone as a capsule. And I didn't do well with it. And I thought, mm, maybe it's the dose. So I tried a lower dose. And I, I still just didn't do well with it. And then I said, you know, Beth, think about it as a nurse. If you had a patient who wasn't doing well with these meds, what would you do? I called the pharmacy. And I said, you know, does this medicine come in any other way besides a pill? And he goes, of course it does. It comes in liquid. It comes in cream. And I said, you know, can you make it in just distilled water? so that I will know if I can really tolerate it or not. He goes, yeah, no problem. So I started it in a very low dose, non-therapeutic, meaning I knew it wasn't going to help. But my goal was long term, if I could get this to help those screaming glia cells, and there's a picture out there, then I thought, you know what, that's taking some control back. So don't be frustrated if you ever try low-dose naltrexone and maybe you're not doing well with the capsule. You can use a liquid. Don't be frustrated if the dose you start doesn't work. You can slowly go up. It's the long term. You'll eventually get there. And so how did I balance those flares that I had while I was doing the low-dose naltrexone? Those ketamine trochies. It's sublingual and it works on another receptor. Then there's a picture outside. And these two things, along with that vitamin compound, have totally changed my life. Okay, so traveling. How do you travel? You're going to get to know the TSA agents. And I will tell you, it takes a lot of planning, but it can be done. This is a notification card that you could print out. And I actually wrote whatever, you know, where I have it. When I go to the, um, the airport, I wear baggy clothes. Things, and if you have this condition, you know what I'm saying, things I can pick up so you don't have to touch. It's the ugliest outfit, but it doesn't matter. Um, and I will call ahead and say that I need somebody to get me through security. Why? I do have my husband, but he takes care of all my medications, the backpack, I bring everything with me. I want someone to get me through the line. I don't want to wait on the line so someone can hit me. Um, and that's been very, very helpful. This is also a freebie for you uh, with a, any kind of disability. This is a free pass. And I felt a little uncomfortable when I first did this because I thought, I don't need that. But then I thought, sometimes, how many times do you go someplace and you can't stay very long? I thought, you know what? I'm going to do this. And we use this for Mirror Woods, right? We went to Mirror Woods, and I couldn't get through the whole thing. But you know what? The fact that I didn't pay for it and it was free kind of worked for me. Um, we've mostly traveled on JetBlue. They have a lot of accommodations. Um, in fact, I will take the wheelchair, my wheelchair, down to the plane. And when we get to the plane, I will walk in. I take off the legs and the 
um, the footrest because sometimes they just suddenly get lost. And then my wheelchair goes into the cargo bay. Always keep your medicines with you at all times. Do not pack them in a suitcase. Um, I do, because you could see I'm a little shy, but I always ask for accommodation. This was a vineyard out in California. Now I can stand, this will be my standing for the day, and then I have to sit. But then I thought to myself, when you go to these vineyards for wine tasting, mostly those, those high bar stools, I can't, I can't sit on those, they're not comfortable. They actually had a little accommodation to wheel right in. Um, I don't know who this man is, but this was a conference in California. And again, I can walk, but walking's an issue, so why would I torture my body? I went in the wheelchair. Um, this was interesting, uh, and when you're at the airport and you're going to rent a car, I've always wondered, how do I get from the rent-a-car to the car? Because most times, they just give you the keys and you gotta go. This place actually in California had a shuttle system, which a ramp, what a novel idea. The ramp came out so the wheelchair could go on. My recommendation is always having your medical documentation. Why? It's empowering. It tells you what you have and what you need. Um, and always bring some extra medication. Adapters, I did go international once. I went to Rome. It wasn't in the way that I wanted to go, but I did go. I will say if you bring a wheelchair, get all-terrain wheelchair, because the bumps in Rome was a little, a little challenging. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is being in a hospital. What you can do as a patient in the hospital, things that are available to you. M many of us with allodynia, we're very sensitive to things, not here. Our skin is sensitive. You can ask for hypoallergenic materials. Um, for example, the EKG leads, those things are so sticky on your skin. Can you imagine having a burn and someone ripping those things off? It almost feels like your skin's coming off. So I use hypoallergenic uh, leads. Paper tape is less noxious than that other tape. You can ask for hypoallergenic sheets and linens, why? In a hospital, they use strong detergents for obvious reasons. It's a little noxious. Um, I asked for disposable washcloths. You don't have to rinse with them. I do have these, so if you want to see what they look like and touch them, you can bring them. And for me, I bring a portable fan because if it's too hot, I, I, don't, do too, I don't do too well. Uh, here, you can ask the nurse to put a, a sign above your bed, please do not cover the patient. Okay, now, I really wanted to educate you, and that's why I put the picture up there. It's not Nurse Beth looking her best. Um, but I used dark sunglasses, even though I was in a room with no lights. Think about it, if your skin is already noxious, it doesn't take many more triggers to make your body noxious. So I found that those were very helpful. The soft blanket, I can't use that white part, but the velvet part was very helpful to me. And here, I had multiple IVs in one arm, so after they stick you multiple times, I was like, it's closed. Let's get to another plan. So they put in, it's called a midline pick. It's just a small, a small um, IV that does not go into your heart. But then it saved me from being stuck again for more bloods. So it was like a miracle. But plan ahead to avoid obstacles. This is a list of what I go through before I decide what kind of toolkit that I'm going to bring. But most important, know that you can do it. Know you're not alone. These two things are very helpful. Uh, Insight is a free meditation device. Even if you do a minute, give yourself credit for doing that minute. Thank you.